Welcome back to my next playthrough series. Yes, it's Dawn of the Zeds, third edition. I have already done a playthrough, my very first playthrough ever on my channel, nine and a half years ago, of Dawn of the Zeds, second edition. This has uh, five or six different difficulty levels. We're just going to start with the basic game uh, this time to get used to the third edition, which is very similar to second, but I don't want to just jump into doing the super complexity right off the start. And so I have everything set up. You're supposed to randomly put down some civilian uh, uh, fighting units on the different tracks. We, of course, have the highway track, the mountain track, the forest track, and the suburbs track. The whole idea of the game, it's a state's a siege game, is we have four heroes, uh, and we are trying to defend the town center. If any Z unit gets into town center, immediately lose the game. We are playing the basic game and what that means is we are using only the blue cards. The cards come color-coded in the game uh, from blue to green to yellow to orange to red in uh, levels of difficulty. So we're just using the most basic game. So our setup is uh, we're just using the ammunition track, we don't use the supply track, and we don't use the infection track for the very base game. All right, we're going to take a look at our four characters. We have one heroic civilian unit, some regular civilian units. Uh, I'm not going to get into too many details. Game's been out for, ooh, I don't know how long, 12 years now, this edition. I finally got a copy of it. I really want to play it. It's very cool. This edition is just the nicest. Like I said, I do have second edition. All right, we're going to take a look at our four starting characters. They're all blue characters. There's five in total. Uh, you get you always play with four, and we're doing a solo version. So there's a solo version, a competitive version. Someone can actually play the Zeds now in the third edition, and a cooperative version. We're just playing the straight up solo version. All right, let's take a look at our characters, their abilities, and then I think we're just going to get into doing some turns. You'll see how the game actually plays as we do the turns. All right, not sure exactly how well this is going to focus. We do have one as a solo player, just one basic player action and we can just use this for any of our characters. Uh, we are basically going to be playing Captain Piazza as a solo player and then we have three extra characters that come with it. You're basically playing four characters so that's how you have it. Oh boy, so Deputy Schmidt, you know what, I think as we activate the characters, again I don't know how you can see that very well, we are going to take a look at each character when we're going to activate them and what they, what abilities they have. So they're going through everything right now. Basically, Piazza's a sniper. Mr. Johnson's a scavenger. The mayor is a civic guy. He basically hangs around town center giving people uh, speeches and extra abilities and things. And Deputy Schmidt is law enforcement. He's got his own special abilities. And initiation token for him. He gets to take a, a, a extra action for just himself every turn. And we'll see everything in action. And one of the blue uh, regular uh, heroic civilian units we got are the veterans, I believe they are. And we'll get into them uh, as we speak. An anatomy of a card, they have a three full strength, a two damage strength, a movement of three. And you can see that on all the player characters as well. You know what? Let's just get into a turn and we'll see how it works. Oh, and Mr. Johnson's special ability is to give us three extra ammunition. The basic game, you get four ammunition, but when you have Mr. Johnson, he comes along with three. He's got all kinds of extra ammunition handy. All right, let's get to the main board, and uh, I will explain things as we go, and we'll see how that works. All right, and the absolute gist of the game is to go through the entire event deck of cards, and these wrap up from in Act 1 to Act 2 to Act 3. Uh, and this is how many cards we have to get through. We have to survive to get, till we get to the end card. These are all blue cards, you'll see as we start uh, playing them. And if we can get through all the cards and have no Zeds end up in Town Center, we're going to win the game. <laughs> it's very, let me tell you, it's difficult. I know second edition is difficult. And then we have a deck of Fate cards. These are all the blue Fate cards, and they're used for various things, uh, as we'll see in, as the game unfolds. Fate deck. Okay, we are, um, yes, all our four heroes start in the town center. We get one heroic unit starting in town center, one regular civic uh, civilian unit starting in the town center, and we have two civilian units on the suburb track, and they're defiant, which means they're not going to move until they get attacked by Zed units. And we have one up on the forest track, we have one up there on the mountain pass track, and one on the highway track. All right, let's just get into it. We're going to 
be taking the first event card off the top, and we're going to follow through with all the instructions on it. We'll show you how we play the base game. All right, let's begin the first turn of Farmingdale. We're trying to defend Farmingdale. We have event card and anatomy of an event card. Uh, so you can see this is the first phase. So there's first, second, third, and fourth phases in the game. We're just, of course, starting. Uh, in the base game, you ignore the 4R section, you ignore the um, this section here with the skull, and you ignore the eat section. In more advanced games, you're going to have supplies, which of course you need to eat. You're going to have uh, rangers, and you're going to have raiders, and you're going to have uh, refugees and stuff. That's all the R phase. And the contamination phase uh, as a track at the very bottom here, which uh, has to do with outbreaks. But we are just looking at... In the base game, the Zeds phase and the action phase, how many actions we get. All right, oh man, this looks like the Suburban track. We're going to get a double activation right off the bat. So we're going to get into some fighting. I'm going to see how that happens right away. At the beginning of this phase, place a new Zed unit on an empty start space of your choice. Well, they're all filled right now with random Zed units. If otherwise, otherwise place it on the start space with the lowest strength Zed unit. If and when a Zed unit enters a space occupied, by any civilians or hero units this turn, you may freely retreat that unit instead of engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, which might be a good thing for us to do. Uh, so, okay, following the instructions, so we basically are going to be placing a random Z unit. I'm going to put this right here because we're not using the super uh, weapon. I'll put the card here so we can see it in all its glory. Oh my goodness. All right, this is the suburban track. We're going to have to zoom down here. And we have a five strength Z unit on the forest track. We have a randomly selected four strength on the mountain, a four strength on the highway, and a five on suburban. So our lowest strength units are either the um, highway or the mountain. I think we're going to put a random one down here at the highway because the Lucky Strike Mine is the best place to forge for ammunition. And trust me, we're going to be doing a lot of shooting of Zeds in this game. So let's go down here. We're going to grab a random Zed out and we're going to form a zombie mob. Oh yes, already off to a great start. And I don't have the Dawn of the Zeds bag, but I do have lots of Crown Royal bags. So we're going to pull a random Zed unit. And there are lots of them. There's regular Zeds and there's Super Zeds, but we're not using the Super Zeds in the basic game. So we won't see those until I play it again and we ramp up the difficulty. Oh, okay. We have a six strength Zed unit joining the four strength Zed unit. Uh, and that gives them a combined strength of a 10. And our defendants here, our defenders, civilians, have a strength of 3. That's bad. All right, we're going to go over to the Suburban track because, again, looking at this card, we have a double Z movement on the Suburban tract. And then we can retreat our civilian unit if we want, or we can fight them. And I think we're going to retreat them, and then we're going to get into the action phase after that. So he let's head over to the Suburban track and have the Z units move twice. Oh dear me. So they're going to move twice. They're going to move once to here and twice to here. So now there would be a fight if we wanted to do that, but they have double the strength. And there are little tables here, so when you get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, we have a table to uh, figure out the strength of the Z units versus the human units roll a couple of dice and cross-reference. And we also have a gunfire table, which just means whatever your strength is, you just roll the two dice and see how many hits you get on Zeds. They don't fight back when you're just shooting at them, neither do they retreat. But we'll get into that when we actually have a combat. So right now, we can go ahead and have a combat hand-to-hand. -hand. Not going to do that, though. They're going to lose their Defiant uh, status because as soon as zombie units enter their space they're like oh my god we're out of here <laughs> so or they're fighting now they're engaged but we are going to take the text off of this card and we're going to strategically uh, retreat enter space occupied instantly or hero unit you may freely retreat that unit instead of engaging in hand to hand so they saw them coming and they're like these guys are a little bit too strong for us we're going to retreat one space uh, our civilian and hero units always retreat towards town center, and Zeds always retreat towards the start space. So they have come in here, and they have now ousted us from East Irick, kicked us out of there, and we've moved over to Farmingdale University, our civilian unit. Only strength two, so not fantastic. All right, that's basically the end of what the card text is, and this Zed here has to do with co-op play. We're playing uh, solo, so not co-op, so enough to worry about that. 
And now we go to the actions phase. How does that work? Well, let's take a look. It looks like we get one action. All right, so taking a look at this card, you can see here under actions, we get one. So little clapper board here goes to one. So these are action, actions, civilians, heroic civilians, heroes, anyone can use this action. Uh, and of course, as a solo player, we also have player action, which any of our, we can activate any units with that player action. And then we have units that have their own specific actions, like Deputy Schmidt and Mayor Hernandez. Okay, with that in mind, uh, let's go over to our player area. We're going to figure out which units we are going to activate uh, using our actions. All right, I think first up we're going to activate Deputy Schmidt. Now, we're going to take a closer look at him. His, he has initiative. Once per action phase, he receives a character action to spend on his unit only. Place the initiative marker on his card to keep track of when you've used it. So this is his specific thing, and it shows you at the back which tokens you use for him. And yes, every one of these cards has a huge backstory, which we're not going to get into because <laughs> it takes a long time to read through them all. So he has an initiative marker. He's going to spend it, which means he can perform one action. You can shoot, you can move, you can forage. Uh, he is just going to go ahead and move four. Uh, Eagle Scouts of this one. He gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat and stuff. We'll look at the rest of this. And we're not playing a versus game, so this law enforcement thing at the bottom doesn't make a difference. So we're going to have him move for his initiative action. He's used it up. So boom, let's go over to the main board and have him move. And he has a movement speed of four. He can move four spaces. All right, there does seem to be a lot of trouble starting to brew down here on the highway track. So we're going to take Deputy Schmidt and he's going to move four spaces. He's going to go one, two, three, and he's going to go down to the nuclear plant. So there he is. Uh, and I should say, units can shoot one space away. Their Piazza can shoot more than one because she's a sniper. So if any Zeds get here, Deputy Schmidt can shoot at them. Of course, shooting at anybody uses ammunition, and we want to get more ammunition from up there at the Lucky Strike Mine. We, luckily for us, we have a Forager. So for our next action, the clapperboard action here, we're going to move Mr. Johnson. So we're going to zoom up here. He's going to head on up the mountain track to try and get to Lucky Strike Mine. All right, so we're in the upper quadrant thing. So we're using the one action. We're going to move Mr. Johnson. He has a movement speed of four. His abilities are stockpile. So we've already done that. Uh, we get three ammunition, which we start basic game with four. He gave us three extra. He's a scavenger. He can roll two dice when doing the forage action, which is really good. Because usually on a four, five, six, you get something. Uh, and he's also got heavy weapons. So when he uses gunfire attack, we shift twice on the gunfire ability so he would be three plus two shifts he'd be at a five on gunfire so we want him up close and personal with his heavy weapons shooting and we're not going to worry about practical medicine but he does have a traps ability when his eds or zed mob moves into his space he can lay a trap he either does them the damage and retreats depending on a die roll or he has to fight them hand to hand so that's mr johnson and he's going to be trying to head his way up to lucky strike mine he can't get there in one move but he is going to go ahead and go one two three you don't have to move your total movement he'll hang out at the campground and there you go so we have left one player action for anybody or any unit and we'll take a look at mayor hernandez he's got a couple special actions that he can do as well all right, the mayor sitting here with Piazza and our veterans unit and regular unit. Let's take a look at his special abilities. So he's got keys to the city. Add plus one to all forage die rolls made by every other player in the town or town center space. So these are town spaces, the four around the town center. And the town center itself is also considered a town space. Traffic control. Entering town uh, center costs a movement of zero movement points. So to move from any of the outskirts, the downtown east side, uh, mall district, or suburbia into the town center, only don't, doesn't cost any action points so, or any movement points. So that's pretty cool. So he has two tokens with him. The Citadel once per action phase, which is now he may spend a Citadel action mark to give a unit in town center a free gunfire attack with a plus one shift. Place a Citadel mark of, well, we're not, we're not able to shoot at any Zeds yet. They're too far away from Town Center. And he has a motivational speech once per game. He can spend his motivational speech marker to give a powerful gripping speech. Every other player in the town space in, uh, is inspired by it. Immediately receives a free action. Place the motivational speaker uh, marker on this card to remind you've used it. So that's his abilities that he has. But of course, we're not going to use it right now. We have one player action left. And I think we want to get... Um, 
we want to probably either get our heroic civilian units to move out somewhere. Maybe we're going to get our heroic civilian units to start moving down the highway track with that 10, a 10 mob coming. So we're going to use our player action, we're going to spend that, and we're going to activate our heroic units. So let's take a look at our heroic units as my battery dies. So we're going to come right back, and we're going to check them out, and then they are going to move. They've got a movement speed here of 3. All right, let's take a little closer look at our veteran units. They've got a movement of three. Like I said, their full strength is three and their damage strength is two. Abilities, armed and ready. So uh, this unit's first gunfire attack each turn costs zero ammo. That is awesome because ammo, ammo is hard to come by. Combat experience, this unit ignores retreats, forcing Zeds to retreat instead so they can really hold their ground. And you know what, we're going to send them up the mountain track because like I said, that's the best place to gather ammunition and we're going to need it. So they get to move a three, so they're going to go one, two, three. They're going to join Mr. Johnson at the campground on their way to protect the mountain track. All right, that's all of our actions spent. We're finished with our first of 20 cards. <laughs> so we've survived. So we're going to zoom out. We're into the housekeeping phase. So all of our tokens flip back over and we get ready for another turn. So Deputy Schmidt's initiative token flips over. We get our player action back and we'll find out in our next episode what's happening. So we're going to zoom out and wrap up for today. Okay, so the Zeds have already made a double move up here on the suburban track. I think it's nine, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's their eight movement to get into town center, but we have to hold them off. So we got Piazza and we got our mayor still in town. We got a regular unit here. We sent Deputy Schmidt down here to the nuclear plant. And we have a 10 zo a zombie mob down on the highway, which is not good. <laughs> so there you have it. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. This is Dawn of the Zed's third edition. And we have to try and protect the town center. We're just playing the basic game. I'm going to see how it works. Have some fun here. So we'll see you tomorrow for continuation Dawn of the Zed's third edition.